It's Friday, February 15, 2013, and let's talk about what happened this week over at XTADevelopers.com. First off, anytime there is an AOSP update, of course it makes big news and we do make sure to talk about it here on XDA. Well this week Google pushed another official update to the AOSP. Android version 4.2.2 is now available for certain Nexus devices. However, given the version number of 4.2.2, you should probably assume that it is a relatively minor version increase. There's not a whole lot that's new about it. One of the big things that has been added is the idea of an ADB whitelist, which essentially when you connect your device to your computer using your USB cable, you start up ADB and connect to it. It's going to pop up and ask you for RSA information, ask you to confirm it at least, which should be a good security benefit for the future. They've made some changes in the way that downloads works in that it shows you now a download progress bar that actually has a percentage on it and a countdown timer and things like that. They've added some new sounds for wireless charging and low battery alerts, and in a bit of an odd move, they've made some changes to the toggles that come in Android 4.2 so that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth specifically, you can actually toggle them on and off using the toggle buttons, but you have to hold the, the button. When you hit it, it still goes to the menu. So that's odd to say the least. There's also been some speculation as to whether or not they put in some Bluetooth fixes. Supposedly they have, but it has not been officially reported one way or the other. If you have the current generation GSM Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 7 or the Nexus 10, you can go ahead and sideload this installation. They should be showing up over the air for some of these devices in the very near future. Unfortunately, the Verizon Galaxy Nexus will probably never ever see this update officially, so I am waiting for CyanogenMod to get their hands on it and push it out. But anyway, enough of my frustrations, let's move on. Now the next two stories are going to come off as a bit of Sony butt kissing, but we tend to do that because they've been really nice to the developer community over the last year or so. This week, Sony mobile developer Pal Cezaz released an application that you can now use called XAPP Debug, X-A-P-P-D-B-G, so it's all short words combined, which is essentially a client and server application. You run the server component on your Android device, the client on your desktop, and you can use that client to connect to the server to see all of the public methods, and just give you another way to test your app live on the device. Very cool stuff. It's another instance of Sony stepping up and providing a very useful utility to the community. For more information on that, make sure to see PAL's thread on the forum. And additionally, in an almost unheard of feat, the Sony Xperia Z has not even hit the market yet. Not even out yet and Sony has gone ahead and released the kernel source code for the Sony Xperia Z. Now, like I mentioned before, they did release early alpha code for the Xperia T, but that was a device that was already on the market. This one hasn't even come out yet. So this, like I said, almost unheard of. I know Samsung did do something similar with the, I believe it was the Note 10.1. They released something before it actually came out. So that actually is putting them on equal footing with it. But in terms of community support, this is just another step in the right direction. It allows people to get their hands on this code, start working on ROMs and custom packages patches and mods and whatever else for the device before it even hits shelves. So once again, two thumbs up for that one. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about it, you can always read up more on the forum or head on over to Sony's open source development download site. And one last thing, if you haven't seen it already, TK put out an app review this week as usual. This one was a gesture-based launcher showdown between LMT and Trigger. I'll be honest, I'm not really familiar with either one of them and I haven't had a chance to watch TK's video yet. But from what I understand, LMT is actually the launcher that's being used by the Paranoid Android team in Paranoid Android 3. So it should be a very interesting video just to sort of compare and contrast between it and another known launcher of the same kind. So if you haven't seen that video already, I do recommend taking a look. I haven't seen it myself, so I'll probably go watch it while I'm editing this video. Anyway, that's going to be all from me for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe to receive our content as soon as it becomes available, and I will see you on Monday.